Mary Sutphin. We're going to go ahead and get started and call the September 14th um, Seminole County Magistrate hearings um, uh, to order. The way that this works, it's um, a rather informal process, but still serious. Um, you all will be called up um, based on appearance. So it's really based on order. So if you do have an agenda in front of you, it's not based on the order of the agenda. So you will be called. Just be patient. And we're, we try to do it based on when you get here. Um, so what will happen is when you, your case is called, you'll come to the table. You need to speak clearly into the mic. The county will present its case first. You will then have an opportunity to present your case. If you want to cross-examine any of the county's witnesses, you can do that at that time. The county can also ask questions of you. Like I said, it's a, it's a rather informal way of doing it. There's not the, the typical um, procedural requirements of a court proceeding. However, we do have some rules. You know, you can't get out of line. So um, once the county presents their case, you present your case. I'll make a decision here today as to whether there has been a violation. And if there is a violation, you stand to have a fine imposed of up to $250 a day if you're here for a first-time violation, and up to $500 a day if you're here for a repeat violation. If you do not come into compliance within the time that I order, um, there will also be a compliance hearing that is set for after this hearing to determine whether you have, in fact, come in, into compliance. If you have, you do not have to come. But if you have not, then your presence will be expected. Um, we're going to go ahead and get started, and I'll call the first case. Yeah, let's go ahead and swear witnesses in. Um, I'm going to swear the county witnesses in and the first case witnesses. I like to swear the witnesses in prior to their case. So let's go ahead and call Jonathan and Ashley Finn, 2362 CESM. And then we will, if you'll raise your right hand, and then I'll swear the county in at the same time. Do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give to be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. Okay. Have a seat. I do. Okay, so this is checking in. For the record, name is Vicki Hathaway, Building Inspector for Seminole County Building. This presented a copy of this presentation to the clerk and requested it be entered into record. Case number 2362 CESM for the property located at 20 East 1st Street, Tuliota, which is owned by Jonathan and Ashley Finn. The violation charge is Seminole County Code Chapter 40, Appendix A, Section 105.1. Description of the violation, installation of above ground pool, electrical, potential whole house rewire with the required permits. The initial inspection happened on 125 of 23. Notice to the respondent went out on the 26th of 23. Compliance dates were given of 2-9-23, uh, 3-7-23, and 6-9-23. Follow-up visit inspections you can see there below. Um, the follow-up inspections via computer results of the re-inspection, re the violation remains on the property. The initial inspection was done on 125-23 and notice to the respondent on 126-23. Um, Follow-up inspections that are shown and on the next screen, it shows Jonathan and Ashley Finn as the owners of the property on the property appraiser's website. This is a, this is a copy of a posted hearing that was done on 8-29 of 23. This is a picture of the garage ceiling with electrical taken on 1823. The next page or the next slide shows the laundry room wiring and meter taken on 118 of 23. The above ground pool that you can see from the image dated on 12 of 23, which was discussed by the inspector that was on site. This here is a copy of the final letter posted on the property on 5-12 of 23 due to returned mail. This next slide is the, the photographs of violation taken on 9-13 of 23. The next slide shows the actual 
permitting process screen where the owner of the property has come in today. Application was received on 522 of 23 for the above ground pool, which shows uh, permit number 238166 is currently in approved status pending issuance due um, to septic and permit payment. A permit for the outdoor fireplace was issued today, uh, right before this hearing. And we've also got one for the electrical permit unrelated to the electric work included in this violation. 21, um, permit 2114160 is issued alteration permit for roof framing, also unrelated to this violation. This is a copy of the AP status, which is approved pending septic permit approval and payment. <clears throat> this is a slide uh, that shows um, Chapter 40, Appendix A, regarding the permitting process. And the next slide shows Jonathan and Ashley Fenn. The recommendation is based on the testimony and evidence presented in this case number 2362 CESM. It's determined that the respondents are the record owners of the property located at 20 East 1st Street, Tuliota, in Seminole County, as determined by the property appraiser's records in possession and control of the property in violation of Seminole County Code Chapter 40, Appendix A, Section 105.1. It is further recommended that the special magistrate order the respondents to correct the violation on or before September 17th of 2023. In order to correct the violation, the respondents shall obtain the required permits for the cited violations. If the respondents do not comply with the order, a fine of $50 will be imposed for each day that the violation continues or is repeated after compliance. The respondent must contact the inspector to verify compliance. This concludes my presentation. Okay. Did you mean November 17th for compliance? Yes, I'm sorry. Yes, okay. that is correct. No problem. And would you like to submit um, this electronic case file into the record? Yes, please. Okay. Do you have any objection to the electronic case file that's been presented to you to be submitted into the record as evidence? No, ma'am. Thank you. Okay. Do you have anything you'd like to add? The only thing I'm lacking is turning in this to the waste place, but they're closed today. The septic. Okay. Um, do you have any concerns with what the county has suggested as far as a compliance date of November 17th? Well, once I turn this in tomorrow, it's back up to the county until I can get my permit. So, as Okay. So you, you feel like you can come into compliance by November 17th, the time that they've suggested? I hope so. Okay. <laughs> if not, I have no faith in my county. <laughs> Um, I will say we don't have any control over the health department, and I know they have been backed up. So they are behind on their inspections. So if they're behind on their inspections, do we think that um, November 17th is reasonable? Um, I gave Mr. Finn my business card and asked him to please contact me if he runs into any snags so we can work together and I can make notes of it to where I can get him back in here to request additional time if that doesn't happen. Okay. Um, I can't guess because they, I know they are backed up. So if the compliance um, is by November 17th, it's the day after the next meeting, so we would be into December 14th for our compliance hearing anyway. So if something occurred, there is a month time in there that I could deal with that um, at that time. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and find that you have been properly noticed um, to be here today, that you are present, you have participated, um, that there is sufficient evidence to show that you are in violation of Seminole County Code Chapter 40 Appendix A Section 105.1 for failure to obtain the necessary building permits. I'm going to order that you bring the property into compliance by receiving the proper building permits by November 17th, 2023, or incur a fine in the amount of $50 a day for each and every day thereafter that you're not in compliance. And I'm going to also set the compliance hearing for December 14th, 2023. So if you aren't in compliance, you would need to come back but like the county has suggested, if for some reason there is a problem with the health department and it's not a problem of yours, then we can certainly work with you on that time period at that December hearing. Yes, ma'am. Okay? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you.
Okay, let's call our next um, case, 2361 CESM, Alan J. and Sandra T. France. Mr. and Mrs. France, if you'll go ahead and raise your right hand. Stand up. No, no, you don't have to. He please, okay. no, please. Uh, do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give to be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Okay. For the record, name is Vicki Hathaway, Building Inspector for Seminole County Building. This is in regards to case number 2361 CESM Allen and Sandra France at 700 East Osceola Road, Seminole County, Florida. Violation charge, Seminole County Code, Chapter 40, Appendix A, Section 105.1. Description of the violations um, are the following here. Installation of multiple structures with electric, shipping container and accessory structure, um, and gate with electrical without the required permits. <clears throat> this next slide here shows a case summary as follows. The initial inspection was done on 3 7 Notice to the respondent was given on 3-8 of 23. The given compliance dates were 3-22-23, 4-11-23, 5-12-23, 6-2-23, and 7-10-23. Follow-up inspections shown both on-site and via computer. Results of the inspection, the violations still remain on the property. This is a screenshot from the property appraiser's website showing that these are the owners. Um, Alan and Sandra France are the record owners of the property. Following photograph shows a posting of the notice for this hearing on this property that was done on 829 of 23. This is a photograph of the multiple accessory structures taken on 3323, which the second photo here is kind of hard to see. There's a barn there that was reported. Um, a copy of the gates with electric or with solar panels taken that is not permitted as well that was done on 3-3 three, three of 23. Multiple structures again that are shown with the same slide. Um, again, another uh, picture of the gate with the electric taken on 6-26-23. This next slide is an aerial image showing multiple structures added since 1-21 of 21. The next three slides show aerial images depicting the multiple structures added to the property. Um, and again, the same slides again. And again on 12, 18 of 22. Um, here's a picture of the gate violation that was done on 9, 13 of 23, the three that still remains. And one of the structures that are there, and you can see where in the first slide where there's a white truck, there seems to be some type of barn or type of structure there. Next slide. This is a screen that shows the permitting process. Um, no permits are applied for or issued to correct the violations. Um, the permit application 237597 was received on 51123 for a metal carport, which has since been removed from the property from a follow up inspection. This is a copy of the uh, Seminole County Chapter 40 um, Appendix A regarding the violations that they're in violation of. The next slide shows the recommendations based on the testimony and evidence presented in this case number 2320, or 2361 CESM. It's determined that the respondents are the record owners of the property located at 700 East Osceola Road, Geneva, in Seminole County, as determined by the property appraiser's records, in possession or control of the property, and is in violation of Seminole County Code Chapter 40, Appendix A, Section 105.1. The following slide here is further recommended that the special magistrate order the respondents to correct the violations on or before November 17th of 2023. In order to correct the violations, the respondent shall obtain the required permits for the cited violations. If the respondents do not comply with the order, a fine of $50 will be imposed for each day the violations continue or are repeated after compliance. The respondents must contact the inspector to verify compliance. This concludes my presentation. Okay. Thank Would you like to um, enter the yes, electronic please. file into yes. the record? Do you have any objection to the electronic file which has been presented to you and shown on the screen being um, placed in the record? No. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> okay. I got it. I got a question. Give me this paper. 
Okay. Three water plates in 2000. I'm not sure what that paper is. Can you? You want to? Yeah, either way. It doesn't matter. I, I would like the county to see it too, though, if you could. We bought the property in July of 2000. Okay. And now she's telling me that I have to have permits for everything that was there before I bought it. Um, I don't have permits here for these that are showing up. It may show a description of the extra features. Can I? Yes. Yeah, let me see that. These are extra features that the property appraiser is separate from our office, and they do go out and collect information in order to tax the properties for every structure they have on there. And those are visual, yes, they're visual inspections. And um, just, Mim, you can go ahead and have a seat, and I'll give this back to you. But um, so just because the property appraiser has picked something up when they are appraising a piece of property doesn't necessarily mean that there is a permit for Correct. it in your system. Correct. That okay. is what I'm I tell people. I've for it now since I've bought it. That is Many correct. Many years later? That is correct, sir. Yeah, you're wrong. you're always responsible for making sure that the the structures on your property have permits, um, it, regardless. And, and it is part of your due diligence when you buy a piece of property to make sure that all of the structures have permits. Um, and then it's also your responsibility to if you if you purchase it in 2000. Yes. There, were, there were some new structures I think showing that the county no, showed. I, mean, I know I put the carport up. We took it down. Okay. Because I went upstairs to zoning and seen Jim Potter, and he looked at the things. He said, I didn't need the permits for the ones out back because they were there when I bought the property. Hmm. Hmm. That's yeah, incorrect. I, that's I'm, a different. I'm sorry that you were told that, but that's not accurate. If you have a piece of property, you're responsible for making sure what, from the time you purchase it that everything on it has the, the necessary permits. And then thereafter, you are responsible for those permits. Okay. Okay. I'm, I can hand this back to you if you... So the county has suggested that um, you obtain the necessary permits by November um, 17th for all of the various violations. Um, do you have the ability to, is that reasonable to you? Um, I don't know. Dealing with them so far, I, I bought their carport. I got their certified drawings, turned them in, and they refused them. Okay. And now I got we the other buildings. It. Now I got, they're into an engineering company trying to get drawings done. They haven't got, got back to me yet. Okay, so as many structures as, as are unpermitted on the, the property, is it reasonable for them to be able to get all of those, do you believe, since there is no, are there any health department requirements related to those? My last discussion I had with Mr. France was that they were going to remove the barns. Okay. Remove so barns. that was one option there. And then at that point, it stopped the communication with me. I haven't talk to them. I've been out there. Um, and usually when people see me, they want to find out what are you doing? Why are you here? Um, to find out where are we at with the process? Do you need more time? Are we taking them down? Are you keeping them? Are you permitting them? What, what are you doing? They did remove the metal carport, which was new. Um, they're in the permitting process of that, which I said, you, I mean, if you're in the permitting process, you could have left it there if you can get it done. Otherwise, take it down and start over with the permit. It's the fastest way to resolve the issue. I don't know how fast that can happen. I mean, I'm not them. I can't speak for them. That would be a question they would need. Certainly. I just wanted to make sure that as far as what you know, once everything is submitted, um, if, if the county would be able to, if it's complete, if the county could process it sufficiently. If it's complete and we have everything we need and there's no questions that we have to come back and wait on, 
we're pretty efficient about that, and I can usually show the turnaround times are literally within two to three days. Okay. Okay. Good to know. So um, what the county is, is explaining is that you have to be on the ball with this. You have to be the one that's responsible. And um, when these cases come in front of me, I typically am, I, well, I'm working with you if you're working with the county. And so in my mind, it's important that you keep up that communication and you continue to, if you have to call her every day and make sure that you are doing what you're supposed to be doing, that's what is key here to making sure that this is going to be successful. So if, if you don't have a date other than the November 17th that sounds reasonable to you, then I'm going to go ahead and order the November 17th date. But... I will, is there anything else that you want to add? No, I'm just having trouble with the, I've, since she started this, I've been trying to get the engineering company to give me drawings, and I finally got to hold them back to, today, and they said they're working on them, getting ready to go. And I'm like, well, in this order, I told you, I said, you know, I, I have to go to a hearing today. I said, now I got nothing. But the order may help you some to let them know that this is urgent. This isn't something that you, you really need their assistance. Um, as long as you maintain communication 100%, um, I can show leniency on my end as well. But you have to maintain the communication. You can't just not contact if you're having issues. Do you understand? Yes. Okay. Do you have anything else that you want to add before I make a ruling? No. Nope. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and rule that you were properly noticed to be here today, that you are here, and that you have participated sufficiently in the process, that sufficient evidence has been provided by the county to show that you are in violation of Seminole County Code Chapter 40, Appendix A, Section 105.1. I'm going to order that the property be brought into compliance by obtaining all the necessary permits or removal of the structures um, by November 17th, 2023. And if you do not do that, that a, the, um, a fine in the amount of $50 a day will be imposed against the property and will run each and every day until you do come into compliance. And I'm also going to order that you come back for a compliance hearing on December 14th, 2023 if you are not in compliance. That will show on your order, so you don't have to write that down. It'll show on the order that you receive. Um, and you can, at that time, if for some reason you couldn't get everything done in time, and for some reason that there's stumbling blocks because of other people that you're dealing with, but you have remained in contact with the county at all times, then at that December 14th hearing, I can certainly work with you. Okay? Thank you. Okay, the next case is Thomas Cartwright Jr., 22103 CESM. Oh, great. Mr. Cartwright, if you'll raise your right hand, do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give to be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Okay, for the record, um, I'm going to ask that this be entered into record uh, for the clerk. The, this is Vicki Hathaway, building inspector. I presented a copy of this presentation to the clerk and requested it be entered into record. Case number 22103, CESM for the property located at 5675 Deer Path Lane, which is owned by Thomas J. Courtright, Jr. Violation charge, Seminole County Code, Chapter 40, Appendix A, Section 105.1. Uh, description of the violations are remodel of an interior of a garage into an apartment, including plumbing, electrical, HVAC, spray foam insulation, new windows and doors, large metal building, a carport, shipping containers, and modification of swimming pool without the required permits. This next slide shows that Thomas J. Courtright Jr. is the property owner of the property. The next slide shows one of the violations here, the carport that was taken on 5-3 of 22. 
Next slide shows the interior of the apartment um, that we have here, the bathroom that was taken on 5-3 of 22. Again, interior doors to the apartment, of the garage apartment. A uh, copy or a picture of the HVAC um, date that was taken on 5-3 of 22. Inter different interior um, kitchen area pictures that were taken on 5-3. Shows a laundry here and the structure of the inside on 5-3 of 22. And just various different pictures of the inside of the structure. <clears throat> Next slide shows a metal building that was taken on 5-3 of 22. This was a pool area that was somewhat modified on 5-3 of 22. The pictures were taken. These are not my pictures. I'm going off of another inspector's pictures that we had. This is the spray foam that was taken on 5-3 of 22 for the insulation um, and a copy of the uh, different photographs of the violations of the different barns and the sheds that were out there in the, in the picture of the house. This was on, taken on 12-7 of 22. This right here shows the screen that shows the application for the carport and metal building and electrical received on 8-29 of 22. These were permits 2214927 and 2214925. These permits are currently on hold pending the septic permit um, and septic approval. So he currently is in here asking for additional time because of the septic system that we have. And I, he's been in touch with us continuously. Um, it shows other permits here that were done for issues for permits for a demo of two sheds and gazebo. Um, that was 233424. Permit number 2214922 is issued fence permit, not part of the violation. The next slide is the plan tracking information approved that was on 916 of 22, currently wait, awaiting the health department. The date applied for was 829 of 22. This concludes my presentation. And again, this is a matter of waiting on the health department to. He's hired a private vendor to come in to get it moving instead of waiting on the health department. Okay. The county has requested that their electronic case file be presented into the record for evidence. Do you have any objection? No, ma'am. Okay. Let me ask a couple questions before you go. So this this case already has an existing order? Yes, ma'am. And and that's that order was entered. I don't uh, when was the original? What was it? My apologies. No, you're fine. Um, it was on March 8th of 2023. The special magistrate um, ordered an extending compliance date of August 10th of 2023. An affidavit of noncompliance was filed by the inspector after reinspection on August 15th of 2023. The respondent is requesting additional time to comply. We're currently recommending maybe another 60 days. Um, based on the fact that the septic system, we're kind of at their mercy right now. All of his permits are sitting on hold status, and they've been on hold status. Okay. So let me go ahead and hear from you then, sir. <laughs> so uh, I emailed Vicki the other day. We have now have the septic permit finally um, for the repair. So we have to. We had to get a repair permit before we can get the the notice of. Uh, we don't need a permit for the, the letter. The letter from them. We had to get a repair because the people I bought the house from had a septic modification done in 2010, and they never got a final inspection on it. So that is what has really delayed this whole process. So I hired a soil scientist. They went out, finally got the county or the health department moving a little bit, um, but they're still very slow. I have an email that I forwarded to Vicky where the septic people say they'll be there within the next two weeks to install the new septic. Um, if they show up on time and everything happens and the health department gets it inspected prior to, we should be fine with November if that's doable. Okay. However, you see this has taken a year, a year to get this piece of paper from the health department. Um, mm -hmm. And so that unfortunately is, is kind of yeah. what um, the construction industry is doing right now. So, yes, um, okay. I, um, if you're okay with the November 17th date, the county has testified that you're working with her. Um, that's more than I can ask. That's the biggest thing, I think, as long as you remain in communication with the county so that they know where you are, that's going to help the entire process go faster. Um, 
Okay, so I'll um, go ahead and order that you um, are here for the special request to seek a continuance or an extension of time in your case. Um, 22103 CESM. I'm going to extend your compliance date to November 17th. Um, and I'm also going to set um, your compliance hearing for December 14th. So if you are in compliance at that time, you will not need to come back. If you are not, then we certainly will need to have communications as to why that there are still concerns um, out there. But that um, the extension date being November 17th, with the hearing date not being till almost a month later, it doesn't mean go ahead and take that month. But yes. if there, you know, obviously is an issue, we will we will certainly deal with it. Everything else that was in the original order, as far as um, the number, the amount of penalty, will remain in effect. Understood. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, okay, well, that's a good thing. We'll go ahead and continue that one in a little bit. Okay. Um, Okay, let's hear next, Diego Safi, 2364 CESM. <clears throat> Mr. Safi, if you'll raise your right hand, do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give to be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. Thank you. Okay. Um, Vicki Hathaway, Building Inspector, I presented a copy of this presentation to the clerk and requested it be entered into record. Regarding case number 2364, I'm sorry, hold on, I'm on the wrong case here. Diego's happy, here we go. 2364 CESM is for property that's located at 1409 Ponce de Leon, Winter Springs, which is owned by Diego Sapi. The violation charge is Seminole County Code Chapter 40, Appendix A, Section 105.1. Description of the violation, installation of electrical wiring with new subpanel and receptacles and window removed and resealed without the required permits. The slide shows a case summary as following. The initial inspection was done on 216 of 23. Notice to the respondent went out on 36 of 23. Given the compliance dates as shown on the screen, Follow-up inspections that were shown both um, on-site and via computer results in the inspection. The violation remains on the property. This is a slide of the screenshot from the property appraiser's website that shows Diego Safi as the record owner of the property. <coughs> the slide here shows a photograph showing the posting of the notice for this hearing that was on the property for 829 of 23. This slide here shows the electrical wiring with new subpanel and receptacles and window that was removed and taken on 216 of 23. This slide here shows the electrical wiring shown on 216 of 23 as well. And this slide here shows 216 of 23 as well, electrical wiring and new subpanel and receptacles and window that was removed and taken on 216 of 23. The slide here is a photograph that was taken on 913 of 23 that shows that we're kind of, it looks like it appears we're in the same process as where we were in the beginning. This is a copy of our permitting screen that shows no permits applied for or issued to correct the violation. Permit number 235586 is for offense. Permit number 23420 is for solar PV roof installation. Permit number 2115082 is for a re-roof. This is a copy of the slide that shows Chapter 40 in which they're in violation of. And this is a recommendation based on the testimony and evidence presented in this case number 2364 CESM. It's determined that the respondent is the record owner of the property located at 1409 Ponce de Leon Boulevard, Winter Springs in Seminole County as determined by the property appraiser's re records is in possession and control of the property in violation of Seminole County Code Chapter 40, Appendix A, Section 105.1. Mm -hmm. 
Next slide shows a further recommendation that the special magistrate order the respondent to correct the violations on or before November 17th of 2023. In order to correct the violation, the respondent shall obtain the required permits for the cited violation. If the respondent does not comply with the order, a fine of $50 will be imposed for each day the violation continues or is repeated after compliance. The respondent must contact the inspector to verify compliance. This concludes my presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Sir, do you have any objection to the electronic case file being admitted into evidence? No. Okay. Thank you. You can go ahead. I'm done? Yes. Okay, you can, thank no, you. No, 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 no. Do you have anything you want to add? No, no, no. I'm, um, I just, it was hard to get uh, the plans for, like, uh, they told me I needed the plans to be sealed and signed from, like, an architect. So that was pretty hard to get somebody there for that. Um, so I got that working right now. So I, you know, signed with somebody yesterday, and they say it should take, like, three weeks to get them. So... I don't okay. know if I can email them or I have to bring them in person, the signed plans. They have to come in person. In person? Okay. Yes. Okay. And so the county has suggested that you have until November 17th to come into compliance. Do you have any concerns with that time period? No. Okay. So do you have anything else you want to add? No. Um, I got her card now, so um, if I have run into a problem that is out of my reach, I'll get in contact with her. It's the so. best thing for you to do yeah. is Because I didn't have contact. her, you know, phone number. I had like uh, Ruth Ghosting and Julie. That, that's my staff. If okay. I'm not here and I'm in the field doing inspections, they are equipped to handle any questions okay. that come their way. Okay. That's what I had on the door hanger, but all right. Now I got your car. So. Okay. Okay, perfect. So I'm going to go ahead and order that you have been properly noticed to be here, that you are present, you have participated in the proceedings here today, that the county has presented sufficient evidence to determine that you have, in fact, violated Seminole County Code, um, Chapter 40, Appendix A, Section 105.1. I'm um, going to order that you bring the property into compliance by receiving the proper permits um, by November 17th, 2023. And if not, you will incur a fine of $50 a day for each and every day that the violation remains. I'm going to also set a compliance hearing for December 14th, 2023. If you are in compliance, you do not need to attend. But if you are not, then you need to, to attend so that we can discuss um, any further measures um, from here here okay okay thank Perfect. you thank you The next case is 22102 CESM Michael and Marinka Aya I sorry for the pronunciation Okay, great. If you'll raise your right hand, do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give to be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? The truth. Thank you, sir. I have entered in this presentation of the, uh, this presentation to the clerk and requested to be entered into record in regards to CESM 22102, CESM, Michael and Marinki Ahi? Ahi, yes. Ahi, okay. 2769 Amaya Terrace, Lake Mary, Florida, 32746. He is currently in compliance. Violation described as construction of an addition to the home. Seminole County Code Chapter 40 Appendix A Section 105.1 and its construction without the required permits. The case was originally heard by the Special Magistrate on Jan January 12th of 2023. An order was issued giving the respondents a compliance date of March 9th of 2023. An affidavit of non-compliance was filed by the inspector after re-inspection on March 14th of 2023. An affidavit of compliance was filed by the inspector on August the 28th of 2023 after the permit was obtained on May 8th of 2023. Recommendation based on the findings of fact issued on January 12th of 2023, the special magistrate issued an order reducing the fines to the administrative cost totaling $667.60 and require these costs to be paid within 30 days or the fine will revert to the original amount of $2,950 and constitute a lien on the property. This concludes my presentation. 
The county has asked that the presentation, the electronic file, be entered into the record as evidence. Do you have any objection? I have an objection, Your Honor. Uh, what happened uh, immediately after the hearing here? Yeah? Uh, Sir, I, first I asked if you had an objection to this documentation being added into the to the record. It's right next to you. Okay, this is very one, yeah. yeah. Yes, do you have an objection to this being added into the record as evidence? No, Your Honor. Okay, thank you. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, really after uh, the hearing, yeah, uh, the engineer that was in charge of, uh, of the construction passed. He died. So I didn't even know on time. So I went to his office. His office was locked up. I went there several weeks later. I discovered that he passed. So I have to look for another engineer to take over the 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 the, the job. So I have a letter that it was sent to this county. If I can approach, I give it to you. Sure. If you'll show it to the county first. I don't think we have a copy of this. You do. We don't have you a do copy not. of it, no. Do you have another copy of this? Could I keep this for the record? Okay. And what was the original compliance date? Uh, originally heard on January 12th, and the date was given on March 9th of 2023. So the compliance date was March 9th. Um, what, when did you go to the office of the engineer? That was after, after the hearing, after one week. So I went there, the office was locked up. So I went there, asked questions. So they were, the guy, they don't know his where, they didn't know his where about. So I went there again, a few days, then a few, for about three weeks. Later, somebody told me that the guy died, that is, he passed. So what I did is to Go well, well, about looking for other engineers to take over the position to, to continue the work. I, I immediately notified them here at the beauty uh, department that the guy is late, that the guy passed, that what should I do? They said that I have to look for a different engineer to certify the, 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 the drawing, otherwise I have to start all over again. So I went and I looked for somebody, I don't know whether the, the <coughs> Look for a different engineer, so I have to pay additional money. So see, this pro, pro, uh, project is costing me a lot of money because of the because of the event that happened that was beyond my control. So I pray that uh, if you can waive the additional fee, because I've gone through a lot through this process, I didn't know that this man was going to die, and I, it has cost me a lot of money. So let me ask the county a couple questions. So the, the original um, hearing date was January 12th, so he was basically given two months to come into compliance, 60 yes. days? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And then when did he actually come into compliance? Um, I want to say the permit was obtained on May 8th of 2023. It took me forever to find another engineer to, to, to continue the process. He came in on 12-2 of 22, owner at the front counter on 12-1 of 22, he stated his permit is in the standstill right now due to the death of an architect. After confirming with Bob and Kyle, I emailed Pat to request the continuance from 12-8 of 22 to 1-12 of 23 in order to allow more time to find a new architect. And that was done on 12-2, 22. So there was still a hearing January, there was a, a hearing then on January 12th because of that 30 day Correct. request. Correct. Okay. D so it appears that the record shows that he did actually come in and try to, to communicate with you all. Um, 
This is a very difficult one because yes, it I, is. I think that um, I think what the county has recommended, um, they you know they're trying to recoup their costs, but then at the same time I understand you were um, you took on some additional expenses that you weren't expecting to take on as well by having sure. to hire an additional engineer after you had already paid the other one. Thank you. Um, so. I'm actually, um, I'm going to order that the property is in compliance and that no fines be imposed um, related to this case. Thank you, Anna. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. The building official has come up and said he's good with waiving the fees. Fantastic. So you actually owe that more to, to the big guy in the back. So. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. <laughs> thank you, sir. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Pat, let's make sure this gets in the record just so you all have that. Okay. Is he signed in? Yes. Okay. Yeah. I think you have to be Daryl. Um, Daryl Crutchfield? He's okay. <laughs> That's him. All right. Case number 2323 CESM, Daryl Crutchfield and Nancy Ford. Mr. Crutchfield, if you'll raise your right hand, please. Do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give to be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you. I'm going to read real quick. Um, this is Vicki Hathaway, building inspector. I presented a copy of this presentation to the clerk and requested it be entered into record. Case number 2323 CESM, Daryl Crutchfield and Nancy Ford at 733 Overlook Drive, Apopka, Florida, 32703. Violation charge, installation of new structural headers, framing members, and drywall. Um, violation also of Seminole County Code Chapter 40, Appendix A, Section 105.1, construction without the required permits. Case was originally heard by the Special Magistrate on April 13th of 2023. An order was issued giving the respondent a compliance date of July 13th of 2023. An affidavit of noncompliance was filed by the inspector after reinspection on July 18th of 2023. An affidavit of compliance was filed by the inspector after a permit was obtained on July 28th of 2023. Um, as of yesterday, we checked it out and he has resubmitted a revision to his plans and he currently has a permit and is in compliance. We are recommending um, admin cost. And those are, I can read through that. I don't have it on my list here. I don't either. I don't have that on my list. Oh, I do. No. Zero cost. Okay. Oh, okay. I apologize, it's not on the no problem. You're fine. agenda. Can read the cost. They are $461.21, and the tangible and our service costs, I can show you this right here if you want to pass it on to So the 442 are the basic costs of maintaining the file, Correct. and then there's some actual hard costs of Correct. 1832. Correct. Okay. So the total costs are $461.21. <clears throat> so he remained out of compliance for about 10 day, 15 days, um, and at all times had he remained um, in contact with you. 
He had a permit originally. Um, the case that was originally heard was from an inspector who was doing a roof inspection. When he came down, he saw structural members and framing that was done. I went out there to see Mr. Crutchfield because I figured there's got to be a misinterpretation somewhere of what this permit's for because he had a permit for some interior remodel. So he showed me the inside of the house. We talked and I said, these are the things that you need that are not on your plans you need to revise your plans and resubmit them. And spent about an hour out there talking with him and then from that time forward, he moved forward with trying to get that done because originally there was a permit in place, just more work was done than what was permitted. Okay, okay. Um, Mr. Crutchfield, I'm gonna go ahead and ask that the county has asked that this electronic file be submitted into the record. Do you have any objection to that? I don't. Okay. So um, they're asking for costs in the amount of four hundred and sixty-one dollars and twenty-one cents um, for the um, number of days, rather than imposing the fine. I'm assuming fifty dollars a day is what the penalty. Yeah, yes, ma'am. Was okay. Um, do you have anything you'd like to add? Um. Well, the only reason I was out of compliance for those days from the previous hearing, I believe in April, where she gave me more time. You know, it was my misunderstanding. I thought I was actually supposed to show back up here. So when I showed back up, or well, before it even came out, I was waiting for a notice, but Ms. Hall came out and she explained everything to me. Uh, the whole process, even from the initial inspection with the first inspector, I mean, I don't know if it was a misunderstanding. I mean, I'm out of country a lot, so when I got back to handle it and seeing exactly what it was, and we finally got it handled, I mean, whatever is most amicable. Cool. I mean, I incur costs as well, just like I'm sure the county incur costs. I mean, I was hoping we could just wipe our hands with the whole thing because everybody did their due diligence on both sides to kind of reach that goal. So, all these things fit. So if we're going to um, be fair to both sides, that means coming somewhere in the middle rather than zero. Well, we cut it in half. I mean, oh. we go 200, 220. Uh, I mean. So I think what um, I, I, I do believe that, um, that you're correct, that there's probably a misunderstanding um, related to what what needed to be on those plans um, for that work since you were attempting you did um, have contact with with the county and I appreciate that I think that's very important and I think I saw you here a month before trying to be heard so I do appreciate you taking the time to continue to the communication but the county did have some um, costs in this and they had some um, specific actual costs. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to split their their um, their cost of maintaining the file, which is four hundred and forty two dollars and eighty nine cents. I'm going to bring that down to two hundred and twenty one dollars and forty five cents. Plus, I'm going to um, charge you for the hard cost of $18.32. Bear with me, math was not my strong suit, which is why I went to law school. Uh, so that is $239.77. And I'm going to order that you pay that within 30 days if you do not pay the amount of $239.77 within um, 30 days, I'm going to order that the amount, the 15 day period, $50 a day, and all of the costs be what um, will lien your property if you do not pay the 300 or the, the 239. And I believe that 15 days is $750 plus the 461.21 um, would push that over well over a thousand. So if you pay the 239.77 in 30 days, we'll be good to go. Uh, and then how does that get recorded and the one cannot pay it? You can pay it um, after the order is issued. That would be in a few days, you'll receive it. You can pay it then um, and you pay it here. Okay. It will not be recorded unless you don't pay it. Oh, perfect. That's all I don't know. Okay. So, okay. we're good. All Thank right. You.
Thank, Thank you. you, Vicky. Thank you. For the record. <laughs> Thank you. Give him one of my cards. Of my cards. You know when you're ready? I'm ready. Okay. Let's call All Star Assisted Living LLC 2359 CESM. Okay. Mm -hmm. Vicki Hathaway, Building Inspector. I presented a copy of this presentation to the clerk and requested it be entered into record. Case number 2359 CESM is for the property located at 1131 West Lake Brantley Road. Altamont Springs, which is owned by All Star Assisted Living, LLC. The violation charge is Seminole County Code, Chapter 40, Appendix A, Section 105.1. Description of the violation, installation and renovation of a two-story structure without the required permits. <clears throat> This slide shows a case summary as follows. Initial inspection that was done on 322 of 23. Notice to the respondent went out the same day. Given a compliance date of 4 5 of 23, and then another one that went out on 6 14 of 23. Follow up inspection shown in site visit and via computer. Results of the inspection, the violation remains on the property. This is a screenshot from the property appraiser's website that shows All Star Assisted Living. LLC, that should be, or for the record owner of the property. This is a picture of the posted hearing notice that was done on the property on 829 of 23. This is actually a picture of the structure that's in question here, the photograph of the two-story structure that was taken on 31 of 23. This is a photograph of the interior two-story structure that was taken on 3-1 of 23 when I met the owner on site. This is a photograph of the two-story structure taken on 3-20 of 23 again. A photograph that was also done on 5-31 of 23. Another one that was taken on 6-26 of 23. This is a picture, these are slides of the photograph that was posted on the final letter due to return mail on 7-7 of 23. Again, there's a photograph that was taken on 9-13 of 23 before the hearing. The screen shows no permits applied for or issued to correct the violation. This is a copy of the slide that shows chapter 40 in which they're in violation of. This next slide shows a recommendation based on the testimony and evidence presented in case number 2359 CESM. It is determined that the respondents are the record owners of the property located at 1131 West Lake Brantley Road, Altamont Springs in Seminole County, as determined by the property appraiser's records, in possession and control of the property, and in violation of Seminole County Code Chapter 40, Appendix A, Section 105.1. This next slide shows that it's further recommended that the special magistrate order the respondent to correct the violation on or before December 15th of 2023. In order to correct the violation, the respondent shall obtain the required permits for the cited violation. If the respondents do not comply with the order, a fine of $50 will be imposed for each day the violation continue or repeated after compliance. The respondent must also contact the inspector to verify compliance. This concludes my presentation. <coughs> Okay, I'm going to go ahead and order or find that the, um, I'm going to accept the electronic case file into the record. I'm going to uh, find that the property owner, All Star Assisted Living LLC, was properly noticed to be here today and they are not present. I'm going to find that sufficient evidence has been presented to support a violation of Seminole County Code Chapter 40, Appendix A, Section 105.1. I'm going to, um, let me um, ask if you have had any kind of contact by anyone yes, um, from this. 
I spoke to a contractor this morning who was signed on um, two days ago who is, it's a, it's, the home is an assisted living facility. Apparently there's somebody who's a resident there at that facility that recommended this contractor because he's never dealt with this. And I'm like, well, we do it all the time, so it can be done. Um, it should be a simple fix. He's just got to be able to get himself in there, into the building, see what all is required. I pretty much went over that today with him, what he needs to do. Um, everything is covered up, so it's going to require an engineer to approve it because we won't accept it without seeing it. And so he's working towards that, and I told we asked for additional time because it's probably going to take some time. Okay. Um, has anyone from the, the actual, uh, the property owner yes, itself contacted yes, you? Yes, ma'am. I've met with Elia, who is, I think, the new owner now. She is the new owner. Um, shouldn't speak real good English, so mm -hmm. I think there may be a communication barrier there somewhat, too. So that's why I'm trying to be lenient with her. She did hire this man, and I think it would be a pretty simple fix for them to get done as, if he stays with it. Okay, fantastic. Then I'm going to go ahead and order that the property be brought into compliance um, by December 15th, 2023, or um, the property will incur a fine in the amount of $50 per day. Um, I'm going to... The next meeting date after that is set for March 14th, 2024, which will be the compliance hearing date for this case. And that's all I have. I'm, like, I'm sorry, can you repeat that? March 14th. I have March 14th here. Is there not? 2024? If you look in here, it should be a January 2nd. I don't have a January date. Okay, so what's the what will the January date be? That will be the date that we have the compliance hearing for. I, I was just say, can you look at your calendar? Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I can probably look at one. You're doing the. Like it would be the 11th of January. Yep, January 11th. Okay, I will um, order that the compliance date, um, the compliance hearing be January 11th, 2024. Okay. Are you ready? Yes, ma'am. Okay, let's go ahead and call the next case, 2360 CESM, Savopa Pimput. I'm sorry? Okay. Vicki Hathaway, building inspector. I presented a copy of this presentation to, be, to the clerk and requested it to be entered into record. Case number 2360 CESM is for the property located at 639 Queensbridge Drive, Lake Mary, which shows so, so I can't pronounce the name, Pinput Sovia Pinput. The violation charged is Seminole County Code Chapter 40, Appendix A, Section 105.1. Description of the violation is installation of a screen enclosure and fence without the required permits. This next slide shows a case summary as follows. The initial inspection that was done on 826 of 20. Notice to the respondent went out on 827 of 20. Compliance dates and extensions were shown on the screen above. Um, Follow-up inspections both on-site and via computer show as well. Um, results of the inspection, the violation remains on the property. The screen, this is a screenshot from the property appraiser's website that shows so, Vipa Pimput as the record owner of the property. 
This is a slide that shows the, post, the posting of the property on 829 of 23. This is a picture of the, of the fence and the actual screen room that was taken on 826 of 20. This slide again shows the fence and screen enclosure taken on 10 20 21. And again, this is another one on 10 20 of 21 of the slide um, that shows the fence and the actual screen room. This next slide shows the fence and screen enclosure taken on 2 9 of 22, 4 13 of 22, and 6 22 of 22. And we've got an aerial image here that was taken on 115 of 23 showing fencing and screen enclosure. Um, this one here was also taken. The slide shows that it was taken on 613 of 23 of the fence and screen enclosure as well. This is a picture or slide of the posting of the property on 713.23 due to returned mail. And again, for 913 of 23 before this hearing, the fence and the screen enclosure that was taken. This is a picture or a slide of the permitting screen that shows the application for the pool enclosure was received on 7722. An application for the fence was received on 21 of 22. 221547 for the pool enclosure has been voided due to over six months of inactivity. 221694 for the fence is currently in approved status pending issuance to, the cor to correct the violation. Copy of the permit application for the fence was received on 2-1 of 22. Application was approved on 11-2 of 22. However, cannot be issued due to change of contractor. Form has been received transferring the permit from a previous owner to a current owner. This is a slide of the copy of the permit application for pool enclosure that was received on 7722. Corrections were submitted by the applicant by the zoning department on 719 of 22. Due to 100 plus 80 days of inactivity, the workflow process has stopped on 118 of 23 and subsequently voided out on 511 23. No action had been taken. This slide here shows after plan review by planning development, applicant needs a variance to keep the pool enclosure. The variance application was submitted by the various owner and was approved on 5-12-5-22, an additional requirement to obtain and vacate of a drainage utility easement. This slide over here shows that the vacate application was submitted by the new owner and was subsequently approved in June of 23. As the permit application 2211547 has been voided, a new permit application for the pool enclosure must be submitted for review and approval. This next slide shows a copy of Chapter 40 in which you're in violation of. Uh, the next slide is the recommendation based on the testimony and the evidence presented in the case number 2360 CESM. It is determined that the respondent is the record owner of the property located at 639 Queen Bridge Drive, Lake Mary in Seminole County as determined by the property appraiser's records in possession or control of the property and in violation of Seminole County Code Chapter 40 Appendix A Section 105.1. It's further recommended that the special magistrate order the respondent to correct the violations on or before November 17th of 2023. In order to correct the violations, the respondent shall obtain the required permits for the cited violation. If the respondents do not comply with the order, a fine of $50 will be imposed for each day the violations continue or repeated after compliance. The respondent must contact the inspector to verify compliance. This concludes my presentation. I'm going to go ahead and accept the electronic case file into the record as evidence. Um, has it, it seems that through the, the slides that they have been working toward getting permits various times. Mm -hmm. They have transferred over to the new owner and they did do some things, but they let the permit lapse and it's just sitting there at this point in time. So is it fair to say that there was more activity by the prior owner than there is by the current owner or? I would assume that they are by the prior owner. Sometimes I don't think they understand the variance processes a lot of times, but I've not talked to this, this person at all. Okay. And they just did not show, 
show up here today. No, ma'am. Okay. I'm going to um, find in this case 2360 CESM that the property owner was properly noticed to be here and is not present that sufficient evidence has been presented by the county to support the violation of Seminole County Code Chapter 40, Appendix A, Section 105.1. We're going to order that the property be brought into compliance by November 17th, 2023, and I'm going to order $150 a day um, as a penalty if the property is not brought into compliance by November 17th and I'm going to set a compliance hearing of December 14th 2023 in this case thank you thank you Next case, 2023, or 2023 CESM, Glennis and Vincent Freddy de la Cruz. For the record, building, uh, Vicki Hathaway, building inspector, I presented a copy of this presentation to the clerk and requested it be entered into record. Case number 2363 CESM is for property located at 1320 McNeil Road, Altamont Springs, which is owned by uh, Glennie and Vincent LaCruz, De La Cruz. Description of violation, installation of windows without the required permits. This next slide shows a case summary as follows. The initial inspection happened on 626 of 23. Notice to the respondent was given on 629 of 23, uh, given a compliance date and extension to 710 of 23. Follow up inspections shown both um, site, on site and via computer. Results of the inspection, the violation remains on the property. This is a slide that shows a screenshot from the property appraiser's website that shows that Glennie and, and Vincent Freddie de la Cruz are the record owners of the property. These are slides that show posted hearing notice that was done on the property on 829 of 23. <clears throat> this is a slide that shows the new windows that were that we found that were installed as of 626 of 23. This is a photograph of the final letter posting due to returned registered mail on 628 of 23. This here is a photograph on 913 of 23 of the property, uh, the photograph of the violation for 913-23. This screen here shows no permits applied to correct that violation for the windows. We have been working with them currently for a shed that was issued um, also for concrete and for demolition of a accessory structure that was there when they purchased the home. Um, and also for issued for capped well and septic from the shed to be demolished. Um, Reissuance for a repermit, but there is none for the windows. This is a copy of the slide that shows chapter 40 in which they're in violation of. This next slide is a recommendation based on the testimony and evidence presented in this case number 2363 CESM. It is determined that the respondents are the records owners of the property at 1320 McNeil Road, Altamont Springs in Seminole County. As determined by the property appraiser's records in possession or control of the property and in violation of Seminole County Code Chapter 40 Appendix A Section 105.1. It's further recommended that the special magistrate order the respondent to correct the violation on or before November 17th, 2023. In order to correct the violation, the respondent shall obtain the required permits for the cited violation. If the respondents do not comply with the order, a fine of $50 will be imposed for each day the violation continues or is repeated after compliance. The respondents must contact the inspector to verify compliance. This concludes my presentation. 
Thank you. I'll accept the electronic case file into the record as evidence. Um, have you had, when you're having, working with them on the other permits, have there been any conversations whatsoever related to the windows? They have been pretty much in touch with us for, they purchased this home new to them and it had an accessory dwelling thinking the in-laws would be living there. That didn't happen. Once they got into engineering, they had to end up tearing it down and demolishing it. And if I said it's just easier to start over. If you're going to start over, permit it, and then go forward. Um, they've been pretty diligent about working with us. I don't know if there's a confusion on the windows here, but I usually talk to the son-in-law who calls in regards to these issues, and I've not heard anything on this one. So I am not aware. Okay, I'm going to find that the property owner was properly noticed to be here today and they are not present. That sufficient evidence has been presented by the county to support a violation of Seminole County Code Chapter 40, Appendix A, Section 105.1. I'm going to order that the property be brought into compliance by November 17th, 2023 or incur a fine of $150 a day until such time as the violation is corrected. And I'm going to schedule the compliance hearing for December 14th, 2023. Thank you. Okay, next case, 22107 CESM, Ian Williams. For the record, name is Vicki Hathaway, Building Inspector. I presented a copy of this presentation to the clerk and requested it to be entered into record. This is for a lien hearing. Um, the violation in charge um, that's been charged is installation of drywall, exterior stucco, two fireplaces, kitchen wall, tile, backer board, um, ceiling build downs in multiple rooms, electrical and wood paneling throughout, which the paneling, if it's wood paneling, I'm not concerned with that. It's the drywall that we concern ourselves with. Shower and remodel and wall tile in the bathrooms because those are the wet areas. The Seminole County Code Chapter 40, Appendix A, Section 105, Construction Without the Required Permits. Case was originally heard by the Special Magistrate on December 8th of 2022. An order was issued giving the respondent a compliance date of February 2nd of 2023. An affidavit of non-compliance was filed by the inspector after reinspection on February 3rd, 2023. Recommendation based on the findings of facts issued in December 8th of 2022. The special magistrate issued the order imposing a lien in the amount of $11,200 for 224 days of non-compliance from February 3rd of 2023 through and including September 14th of 2023, and the fine shall continue to accrue at $50 per day for each day the violation continues or is repeated after September 14th of 2023. This concludes my presentation. Okay, I'm gonna find that the property owner um, was properly noticed to be here today for this compliance hearing and that the county has provided sufficient evidence to show that the property is still not in compliance even though ordered to be in compliance by February 2nd, 2023. I'm going to um, order that the property owner pay a fine in the amount of $11,200 for the 224 days from the compliance date of February 3rd, 2023. Um, that the property has been out of compliance and I'm going to order that the um, penalty continue to accrue in the amount of $50 a day for each and every day um, that the violation uh, continues. Um, does the county have any costs in this matter that it would like imposed um, in this case? 
Um, we typically don't do that if we go for lien hearings until we finalize this out. We've not talked to this owner at all. So um, then you do, you do not have a write-up at this point of what your costs no, are to date? No, ma'am. That okay. would be after you impose the lien and they're not in compliance. Oh, he is. When did he call? He called you? He called you? He called me this morning. He's a medical issue. I know my staff has searched to see if maybe he was deceased or something. We haven't heard anything from him. Okay, um, I'm get, my uh, order is going to stand, um, and then if um, Mr. Williams wants to come in um, and discuss further what we need to do, sure. then we can certainly discuss that with him. Um, I do um, recognize the fact that he did call in today, um, but he has had notice of this hearing. Um, I, I realize he has a, a situation that could not be helped that he's not here for, um, but that does not change the fact that he was ordered to come into compliance on February 2nd, 2023. Um, and so I'm going to go ahead and impose the lien and the fines associated, and then we will, um, we can certainly um, look at this again if, if Mr. Williams comes back with something that we need to consider. Thank you. Thank you. Regardless of the fact that he called and had a, a medical issue, this hearing wasn't for that purpose. It was to determine whether he was in compliance or not. And with the evidence that was shown to me, there's nothing. Um, I, I'm not on the record in this case. I'm just explaining. I think that um, because of the evidence that was shown to me, that this case is still in violation. And so yeah, yes. we can um, deal with it again if he wants to come forward after he's a Sure. Sure. Actually, I do need to go on. Um, no, I'm good. Thank you. I'm sorry. Okay. The final case, 22108 CESM, Robert and Susan Ignacek. Vicki Hathaway, building inspector. I presented a copy of this presentation to the clerk and requested it be entered into record. This uh, case number also is for a lien hearing. The, we've got case number 22108 CESM Robert and Susan Ignacic at 2377 Palmway, Oviedo, Florida 32765. Installation of a shed and standby generator uh, without the Seminole County uh, required permits that violate Seminole County Code Chapter 40, Appendix A, Section 105.1. This case was originally heard by the Special Magistrate on December 8th of 2022. An order was issued given the respondents a compliance date of February 2nd of 2023. An affidavit of non-compliance was filed by the inspector after the reinspection on February 3rd of 2023. Based on the findings and fact, it, facts issued December 8th of 2022, the Special Magistrate issued an order the recommendation is that they issue an order imposing the lien and the amount of 11200 for 224 days of noncompliance from February 3rd of 2023 through and included to September 14th of 2023, and the fine shall continue to accrue at $50 per day for each day the violation continues or is repeated after September 14th of 2023. This concludes my presentation. To find that the property owners 
um, in this case were properly noticed to be here and they are not here to contest compliance and to find that there is sufficient evidence to support that the property is still in violation of Seminole County Code Chapter 40 Appendix A Section 105.1. I'm going to order that a fine in the amount of $11,200 be imposed for the 225 days that the property has been out of compliance um, as of the compliance deadline of February 3rd, 2023, and that the property continue to accrue a fine in the amount of $50 a day for each and every day that the violation um, continues to remain. Thank you. concludes our uh, magistrate hearing for September 14th. Our next hearing date is November 9th. I think those dates changed. Oh, they did change. October. October, be but date, yes. October but 12th. November. Yeah, November is a different date. Yeah, that is correct. Okay. October 12th is the next hearing date. Okay. We're adjourned. Mm -hmm.